Ugh. It's so fucking hot here. How the hell is it hotter here than a new Pegasus? Maybe it has to do something with the cloud cover trapping the leftover radiation from the bombs like a blanket. Not many bombs hit New Pegasus during the war, so... Meh, <sighs> fuck it. I'm sweaty, and I don't want to be here. Name. A stallion in power armor asked as we were entering the gates that led to the compound. As we traveled here with Black Dahlia and Crimson Lance, she'd given us both uniforms so we could pose as scribes. Sparkle, junior scribe, I said, just like Dahlia told me to. Holly Petal, scribe, Vervain answered. Vervain and I were now alone. Dahlia and Crimson Lance were both heading to another entrance to keep the guards from noticing that Dahlia had left. Dahlia gave us instructions on how to enter and what to say when we were questioned. Now, it was up to us to get past the first obstacle. The knight looked at us both, his visor glinting from the light orbs just over the entrance. After a moment passed, he checked something on a strange-looking terminal next to the gate. Finally, he said, Ah, uh, I see you here now. Looks like you two are out collecting samples from the city. You'll have to excuse me. I just didn't know your names. But I guess I can't know every pony who lives in this place. Yes, we were, unfortunately. We didn't collect much, Vane said. I do hope Crimson Lands won't be too upset with us when we make our report. The knight chuckled. I'm sure you'll be fine, though I'm sure you know him better than I do. Head on inside. I'm not sure where the senior scribe is right now, but if he's like the rest of you eggheads, he'll be in the main lab. Thank you, knight. I hope the rest of your shift goes well, Ravane said as he moved aside and let us pass. We'd almost gotten away when the knight stopped by us, saying, Hold up a sec. We both froze, Vervain muttering under her breath, Be prepared to use magic. I did my best to remain calm, my heart racing so I could pull on my magic, something that was still difficult without losing control of the massive sea inside of me, but better than it had been when the rest of my power first awakened. To my relief, that wasn't necessary. The stallion walked up to Ravane, saying, a little shyly, Um, scribe Holly Petal, if you're free this evening, how about you stop by the laser's target and we can get a drink? On me, of course. I almost burst out laughing at the look that cut over Vervain's face. She looked shocked that this knight had just asked her to get drinks. The feeling grew as I saw a small blush come on her face, but it only lasted a moment before she smiled hiding her embarrassment and saying, That's very kind of you, but I'm already taken. Ah, my apologies. It's just we don't see many mares as beautiful as you. Thought I'd at least try. Whoever the buck is who caught your eye is a lucky fella. Good evening, you two, he said before walking back to his post. As we turned to leave, Ravain glared at me as a small snicker escaped my lips. Not a word she said, through grit teeth. It's not every day you get to see some pony you looked up to their whole life get flustered. About what? That you got hit on by a buck in power armor who's technically a rank under you, or the fact that you've had to lie to him so you don't feel bad about asking? I teased. She stuck her nose in the air. First of all, even if I was interested, I'd never say yes to a drink with a knight who's probably ten or more years younger than me, and who didn't even have the decency to take his helmet off first. Secondly, who said I was lying about having some pony? That made me stop dead in my tracks. Wait, you're pulling my leg, right? Who are you with? You've only been out of the stable for a month or so, and most of the time you spend helping Cartwheel or the Shadow Talons. She smirked and said, You're in a relationship with a griffin who used to be your bodyguard. Who says that I can't find something while I'm working at the same time? She asked, but I could see the blush on her face. Oh, my goddesses. I know the buck, don't I? Who is it? Tell me, please. 
I asked as we started walking about. I was getting strange looks from some of the other ponies around us as I jumped up and down, but I didn't care. I never said you knew him. Plus, even if you did, I'm not telling you. We have a mission to take care of, and this isn't the time to talk about my love life or lack thereof, she said. It's the pony who used to run the weapon shop, isn't it? I saw him looking at you while we were in Crimson Canyon, I said with another laugh. You know. He's into stallions, first of all, and smells like onions. I told you I'm not talking about this right now, she said, pushing past a group of junior scribes who were looking over at some papers just outside of a huge building that was sitting right under the palisade which hovered high over the sky. Fine, I'll drop it. But when this is all over, I want to meet the buck. Gotta make sure he's a good match for you, I said. Ravain looked at me, a little offended. I think I can decide who is or isn't a good match for me. Plus, you never got my approval when you started seeing Aura. In my defense, you were deep underground pretending to be a stable dweller, I said. Plus, you like Aura, so don't pull me on that. If I don't like this guy, I honestly don't know what I'll do. Personally, I don't much care for most of the blood talons, unlike my father. But I'll admit that Aura is a good one, though she needs a little work on her temper, Ravain said. Wait, you don't like Aura's family? I asked, a little shocked. It's not that I don't like them. It's more that they're always come off as temperamental jackasses. They give off this feeling that you have to do what they say or they'll rip your face off, Ravain said. When Gigi and I were younger, we used to fight a lot, too. That could be another reason I don't see her family as much more than bullies. Well, if you're going off how Gigi acted, then yeah, I could see that. I liked her, but that took a while. When I first met her, she accused me of sleeping with her daughter, which I wasn't doing yet. Then told me to leave her canyon, I said with a laugh. <laughs> Good point, she said. Still, even if I didn't like them much, I still considered Gigi a friend. It's sad what happened to her. I agree. I hope that one day we can repay Apollo for what he did. Same for Gina, too. Business before pleasure, I suppose. I said with a sigh as we drew closer to a small building where we could see Crimson Lance and Dahlia waiting for us. About time you two got here, Dahlia said her expression looking agitated. We don't have much time before the last transport to the Palisade leaves. We got here as fast as we could, Vervain said, glaring down at Dahlia. Are you sure we'll be able to get around the Palisade without any pony noticing us? Crimson Lance answered this time, saying, You'll be coming aboard as two scribes that I requested help on for a project Dr. Rotarius and myself had been working on. That should keep you two safe for a couple of hours. You're lucky that this project happens to be right next to the transport bay where the Enclave ships are kept. And that should give us enough time to get one that we need. But it doesn't help us with the other part of our plan, I said. What's the other part? Dolly asked. We need to shut down the sensors on the palisade so my Pegasus friend can fly in and hook up the transport. I'll also need to shut down the weapons so that we can make our escape, I said. Crimson's eyes went wide as he said, To do that, you'll have to get to the bridge. That's the only place where you can access that stuff. Dahlia on their hoof said, No, that's not true. My father's chambers have access to those areas of the ship, too. Hacker and him both use the chambers as a secondary control room. That used to be true until the terminal there was locked down by her, Crimson Lance said, pointing a hoof at me. And from the looks of her, she doesn't have the pip buck with her that she used to lock it in the first place. Dahlia rolled her eyes. Dad's terminal was locked down. Not hackers. That's the one that we need to get at, at the time of night that they're both away from their room. She then looked down at me. 
I'm guessing you know where the room is, right? Yeah, but I didn't see another terminal there when I was on the ship last, I said, looking up at the massive floating monster technology. It's hidden behind the Steel Ranger flag, she said, starting to walk away, but kept talking, forcing the rest of us to follow. We'll have to split up. I say that Sha- I mean Sparkle should stay with me so we can get to my dad's room and shut down the stuff we need. In the meantime, Holly and Crimson should head to the hangar and get a ship ready. Find one that's big enough to fit Dr. Brotaris, Crimson Lance, and me. I don't like the idea of splitting up, Ravane said. But if we want to get this done fast, then that's what we'll have to do. Okay, good. So we'll get out of the palisade first, then go to where we need to. She said as she walked over to a strange-looking ship thing. It had three large blades on each side of stubby wings. Sitting atop, a bulbous body with a small nose at the front of it, and a long tail in the back with a, another three small blades sitting sideways. What is that? I asked. Vervain answered, saying, It's a vertebuck. I'm surprised you haven't seen one before. They're pretty rare. The Ministry of Wartime Technology didn't make many of them before the Mega Spells. They were meant to be transport ships, much like the Palisade, but only smaller. They can be operated by Earth ponies or unicorns, so Pegasi weren't always needed for air support. And it's safe, I asked, as Crimson Lance walked up to one of the rangers, who seemed to be the one in charge of the craft. Black Dolly laughed. Of course it's safe. Probably safer than a Pegasus-drawn ship or carriage is. Now get on before they decide to leave us behind. I didn't mind heights much anymore. Not after spending the last few months being flown around by Aura or Stardust, but this was different. I had to put my trust into a machine, one that could just as quickly scoop down to catch me if I was fell. Still, I didn't have much choice in the matter. If I wanted to get this mission done so we could save my father, I'd have to get over my fear. So once Crimson Lance gestured for us to come aboard, I followed Black Dahlia and Vervain. The ranger followed us into the craft and made his way to the front, flapping a few switches with his hoof and strapping into the seat. All right, fasten your seat belts. We'll be off in a few secs, the stallion said. I quickly used my magic to pull the two straps down next to me and put them across my lap. They clicked into place. Then I found the spot I could use to tighten them. I did so and closed my eyes as the blades overhead and the one behind began to spin. The large doors on each side weren't even doors, just holes in the ship. L let the building wind blast into the back of the vertebuck, tossing my mane around. Then a loud rumble and shudder. The ship rose into the air. Thank Luna, the noise of the ship was so loud. No pony, I hope. Heard my small squeak of fear as we headed into the sky. The flight took less than a minute, since the palisade was so close, but it was long enough for me to know that I never, ever, wanted to fly in one of those things again. The vertebuck flew up to a lower walkway under the palisade, and something on the large ship came out to latch itself on top of the vertebuck with a loud rumble. The ranger flying us up shut the vertebuck down, waited for the moment the blades overhead stopped running, and then did something to his controls. The ship shook the arm overhead and pulled us a little higher, then moved us closer to one of the jutting out walkways, finally stopping with a jerky shake. As soon as we stopped, I unbuckled and dove for the walkway, gasping as the other three laughed. She gonna be all right? I heard the pilot ask. First time on a vertebuck, Vervain said, still laughing. Thanks for the ride up. Not a problem. The pilot said as he looked over at Black Dahlia. Miss Dahlia, Elder Wolfsbane was looking for you a little while ago. I just took him back up here and he said if I saw you to have him meet you in the Overlook. Oh, okay, sure. I'll head over there right now, Dahlia said, her face looking a little frightened. Thanks for letting me know. My pleasure, he said, then he walked away. Once he was gone, Dahlia cursed followed by looking over at us, saying, I can't ignore this. Crimson, Holly, you two should head to the hangar and get started. What about me? I asked. There's nothing we can do right now. 
You'll just have to come with me and meet my dad. Let's hope he doesn't see through the disguise, she said. I'm not really sure I want to test that out. Too much is riding on me getting this mission completed, I said. Don't worry. Your rank is showing you as a junior scribe. He won't even notice you, she said. Fine, I said, then looked over at Vervain, saying, Get going. Keep safe. The last part, I said with a small wink towards her satchel. Don't worry, I will, Vervain said. You just be careful. Don't let him notice you. Remember, we aren't here to deal with him. Your father is the only reason we came here. I know, now go, I said. She gave me a worried smile, then followed Crimson towards the only door that led to the large airship. Once she was gone, Dahlia said, I'm sure he's just going to yell at me about being so late. But I'm going to tell him that I'm working on something with the scribes. I might need you to back me up. Can you do a voice impersonation? A little, though I wouldn't want to hold a conversation with it if I can help it, I said, forgetting that I'd been able to pose as Stormy when I was in Mill City Tower. Keep anything you say short and to the point. I mostly just want to get this over with so we can get out of here. The longer you're on the ship, the worse off we are, Dahlia said, turning to head up the steps towards the door. I followed her up and through the thick steel door that led to the lowest part of the palisade. I was going to ask how far the overlook was, but to my surprise, once we were inside, the overlook was just around the same set of stairs I'd used not too long ago to climb to the top of the airship, one way I was escaping with my friends. I hadn't even noticed it when I'd been running for my life. The room looked big enough to hold a meeting with a few ponies and had a large clear window that gave a beautiful view of the hills and city in the distance. Standing at the windows, Looking out over the view was Wolfsbane. For a moment I felt my magic surge as anger filled me at the sight of him. I managed to push it back down and keep calm as, as Dahlia walked into the overlook, saying, You wanted to see me? Wolfsbane turned and I got a good look at the damage box tape had done to his face. He was wearing an eye patch over the spot where his right eye used to be, but it couldn't cover the nasty scar that ran down his cheek accenting the scar on his left. A little part of his eye socket was exposed with more scarring around that. The coat missing a dip uh, on the skin where the bone had been obliterated by the bullet passing through it. A bit of his mane was gone now too, but none of that took away the feeling of danger that surrounded him. If anything, it made him ten times scarier than he had been before. He let a single eye fall on Black Dahlia before he said, I got another report that you wandered out of the compound again. I thought I made myself clear last time I caught you wandering around that enclave-riddled town. Dahlia's normally bubbly and carefree personality vanished under the glare of her father. I could see her legs shaking a bit as she responded to him quietly, saying, I didn't go to Dragonbridge tonight. I just wanted to get some air after my fight with Hacker. I've told you before to call her mother. She's the closest thing you have to one. Also, it doesn't matter if you went to that festering hell howl of a town or not. You were told to stay in the compound. Do I need to confine you to the palisade again? He said, his voice stern and cold. No, sir. But I took Crimson Lance with me. He kept me safe. Dahlia said, her voice still quiet and submissive. For a moment, his eyes softened. But Wolfbane said, I'm only worried about you, Black Dahlia. There have been sightings of ponies who are out to kill me, and anywhere outside the Steel Ranger's compound is dangerous. If any of the ponies who want me dead knew who you were, they'd take you just to get to me. I saw a spark of anger come to Dahlia's face as she responded, saying, It's not like it would work if they did. The hardness came back to his face. But instead of something about her comment, Wolfsbane eyes fell on me. And you are? I didn't ask for a junior scribe. Before I could answer, Dahlia spoke up. This is Junior Scribe Sparkle. She works in the Stable Intelligence Building. And why is she up here on my ship and not doing her job? 
he asked as he looked back at her. She agreed to tutor me on stable layouts and a few other things. She's quite knowledgeable on a few things, and since she's a junior scribe, I figured she has less to do at night. So I thought she could stay with me for a few days. Dahlia said, lying through her teeth. Will Spain glared at me again, holding the stare for a long moment, and then asking, Is this true? Yes, Elder Will Spain, I said, giving a higher tone to my voice, hoping it would be enough that he wouldn't figure out who I was. His gaze went down to my foreleg for a moment, then he shook his head and turned back to Dahlia. Fine, but keep her away from the work the rest of the scribes are doing up here. Also, for right now, I don't want you leaving the palisade. Before you throw a tantrum, I'm doing it for your own good. I believe there are traitors in the compound, and I want to keep you safe. Now, get to your room before I decide to punish you for disobeying me again. Yes, sir, she said, turning to leave. Oh, and Black Dahlia, Wolfsbane said after turning out to look at the window again. Don't ever question me again about what I would or wouldn't do if some pony took you from me. You may not like what I may or may not do if that day comes. You may not like it here most of the time, but trust me. You don't want to know what the courier's friends will do to you if they discovered who you were and took you captive. Especially that bat pony monster. I heard she likes to eat young fillies. Now get out of here. Dahlia gave me a frightened look before she headed to the stairs that led to the higher levels of the palisade. I followed close behind her, shaking as I escaped the notice of the stallion who made my body grow cold with fear. We just made it to the next level when Dahlia said, That was close. I can see why you want to get out of here now, I said as we started going up another set of short stairs, following a sign that read Elder's Quarters. I was starting to recognize the area now, as we were on the levels I'd already seen before. That wasn't as bad as it could have been. I'm lucky I got off with just a talking to. He's hit me in the past, or locked me in my room for days with hardly anything to eat or drink when he's caught me before, she said. I looked at her, not even realizing my hatred for him can get more intense at her father doing such horrible things to his only fool. We got off on the next landing, and I remembered the hallway. At the end of it, where it ended in a T, if I went right, I'd be in Wolfsbane's room. The left would take me to the barracks. As we headed towards our destination, I said, No father should ever treat their child that way. And that's what Crimson and his friends say, too, Dahlia said as she came to the end of the hallway and checked to make sure no pony was coming. Once it was clear, she continued on, saying, I think it's one reason Crimson and the rest have started the little rebellion. They all like me a lot. I smiled a little as I reached the door that led to the elder's room. You seem like a kind-hearted filly to me. She snickered a little. I wouldn't say that, but I do care about the ponies here and the rest of the wasteland, who the Steel Rangers could help quite a bit. There's another reason I want to escape. I know deep down that I might be able to help find, uh, find help from not only my aunt, but from the Steel Rangers and Hidden Sands. If I can just get Sapphire to listen to me, Tell her who I am. Maybe she'll go against the normal code of the Steel Rangers and go against my father. If she does that, maybe this branch can find the right path and stray from Hacker and my father's path. I believe that if you put enough faith in yourself and your dreams, then anything's possible. I said as I tried and failed to open the door. Damn, I was hoping that it was unlocked again. Dahlia smiled a little and said, Thank you for that. And no, my dad learned a lot from the last time you were on the ship. Not to worry, I have my own way in. I watched as she went to the door controls, pulled out a small gem, and put it against the door. It beeped, then opened with a hiss. When she put the gem away, I asked, How did you get that? She shrugged. I stole it from Hacker earlier today. She won't notice until it's gone tomorrow. She's down in the compound working on a new project. She won't be back until she's finished yelling at every pony down there about how shitty they are at their jobs and so on. If you haven't figured it out by now, she's a raging cunt. We walked into the room, 
shutting the door behind us. As I looked around the room, I said, I've only met her once, and only for a moment, as she threw my friends and me off the top of this thing. Is she really as bad as you make her sound? Dahlia was walking over the Steel Rangers flag that hung in the opposite wall of the terminal I used when I was in this room. She paused, looking over at me, her eyes deadly serious. She's pure evil. There's this darkness about her, like she's got a demon inside of her or something. She can use magic I've only ever heard of, and she worships some dark god or something like that. She loves causing others pain and having control over any pony she can. A dark god? Never heard of anything like that before. Although, what kind of magic are you talking about? I asked. She calls it shadow magic, Dahlia said as she pulled the flag aside to reveal the hidden terminal behind it. My eyes went wide as she said that, and I asked, Shadow magic? Are you sure about that? Does this god she worship have a name? Yeah, shadow magic. When she uses it, all the spells have this darkness around them. It also seems to suck out all the light in the room into its depths. She doesn't use it often, but when she does, everything about her changes, and she gets even worse with her personality and love for violence. I also don't know if it's this god has a name. I really try my best to stay away from her beliefs, Dahlia said as she sat down by the terminal and started to log into it. I was starting to shake as I listened to her talk. As she logged into the terminal, I said, My uncle used to have shadow magic, and from what he told me, the only creature who can gift it to another pony is named Mizanote. He's an evil creature from a thousand years ago, the creator of dark magic and shadow magic. If she worships him and has his power, then Hacker is more dangerous than even your father. She stopped typing and looked back at me. I know she is. Who do you think has been pulling all this bullshit into my dad's head? It's been her for many years. The longer he's with her, the darker he becomes. Not that he was the sweetest of peaches in the first place, but he wasn't always this bad. So you mean if it wasn't for Hacker, your father wouldn't be doing all this evil stuff? I asked. She finished logging in, then moved out of the way, saying, No, he still would be, but not as quickly or as brutally. Don't get me wrong, my dad's a bad guy. He just gets worse with her around. I walked over the terminal, started looking for the systems we needed to get into. Well, then, if that's the case, we need to get out of here as quickly as possible. I agree. Now, do you know what to do? I've never messed with this terminal before. I only know how to log in because I watched Hacker do it a few times. Dahlia said as she watched me work. I smiled. Nope, this is the first time I've messed around with strange terminals. I've learned that I have a knack for it. She nodded and watched me as I searched through the data files and programs on the terminal. It didn't take me long to find the one that I needed. With a triumphant grin, I started shutting down the weapons and security systems on the palisade. Once that was done, I took a moment to look through the rest of the programs the terminal could access. Something caught my eye, and I stopped looking over the program. A crazy idea came to me, like quick as lightning. My eyes stayed glued on the words of the screen, not being able to believe what I was seeing. You okay? Dolly asked from the doorway. She was keeping watch for any pony that might sneak up on the room. Yeah, I just got the security and weapons shut down, I replied, backing out of the program for a moment and searching for my broadcaster. I knew that Elder Wolf Spain's terminal had one. I'd used it to contact my father before, so I was hoping that Hacker's terminal had one too. Sure enough, I found what I was looking for. I opened it up and started searching for the signal I needed. Just need to get a message to my friends. Once that's done, we can go to them and get out of here. Okay, good. We'll just need to let the others know, and we should be able to get out of here in a half hour or so. Dahlia said, looking relieved. I stopped, looked back at her, and said, I thought you were having Crimson get your other friend. She shook her head. No, I was going to do that with you once we were finished up here. 
My new plan wasn't going to go over well if I had to wait that long. So I took a moment to think, then looked back at her again. We won't have that kind of time once I'm finished here. Go get your doctor friend and anything you want to bring with and head to the hangar. I'll catch up with you there. How do you expect to find the hangar once you're done here? She asked. I know a few places on the ship when I was here before. If I don't have time, just tell me where the hangar is and I'll be down there soon. I said. She looked ready to argue, but I kept my eyes locked on hers, showing that I wasn't going to back down. Black Dahlia looked defeated, then sighed. I understand. The hangar's on the other side of the hall from the brig. The what? I asked. The brig? You know the jail? If you go all the way down the other side of the hall from that point, you'll be in the hangar. Oh, okay, yeah, I know where that's at. Uh, get going, and make sure you hurry, I said. I'll do my best, but are you sure you'll be okay here by yourself? Dahlia asked. I'll be fine. Now go, I said. She looked at me for a long moment, then nodded and headed out the door. When the door closed, I went back to work. I found the channel that I needed, opened it up, and said, Solstice, I hope you're reading me, because if you're not, I'm going to find you and duct tape you to another stallion. A moment passed, then I heard Solstice, and imagined her huffing in that. Rude! I heard her sarcastically laugh under her tone. You think you're funny, don't you, Shadow? Yeah, I'm here. You ready for us? Yeah. Do you remember how to find the hangar from the outside of the ship? I asked. Yeah, kind of hard to miss. Big, flat door on the ass end of the palisade. Stardust and I are both on the other side of the Applewood sign. We have eyes on it. How long till you need us there? Solstice asked. Hey, let me talk to Shadow. I heard Stardust say in the distance. No, you can talk to her when this is finished, dumbass. Solstice replied. But... I need to ask her something, Stardust complained. Fine, make it quick, Solstice said irritably. I heard shuffling sounds for a moment, and Stardust's voice got louder as he said, Hey, Shadow, how are things up there? Um, I'm in the middle of sneaking into Wolfsbane's bedroom right now, using his crazy wife's terminal to shut down the defense systems here. How do you think things are going? I replied, almost as irritated with my best friend as Solstice was. Oh, yeah. Well, I'll make this quick. I've been meaning to ask you for your help with something for a while now, and if everything's going on and you're running off the other side of the wasteland and all that, I haven't been able to. It's uh, it's about Wind Thrasher, he said, his voice getting quiet, almost like he was hoping Solstice wouldn't overhear him. Is now really the time to be talking about this? I asked. Well, probably not. But I'm nervous about bringing it up to your face, and normally she's with you or me, and I can't ask this without her overhearing me, he said. I sighed. Stardust, this can wait until I'm not behind enemy lines? Come on, it'll only take a minute. See, the thing is, I really like her, and I think it's more than just like, but... He started to go on, but I cut him off. Stardust, I'll talk to you about this later. But for right now, I'll just say this. If you want to know if Windthrusher likes you, then just fucking ask her and tell her how you feel. And that's all you're going to get out of me right now. If you want to talk at length, then wait or quit being a pussy and ask her how she feels yourself. I said. But, I mean, how? He started up again. Post Solstice back on now, before I find a way to blast a spell at you through this damn thing. I said. Ah, fine. Damn. He said. Then I heard him give back the broadcast or the solstice. Was he really asking you what I think he was? I heard her say with a snicker on his face. Later, solstice. Mission to complete, remember? I need you two to fly towards the palisade as soon as you see the doors open. Get in quickly and get set up. We'll be having a few extra passengers, it looks like, so I might need both of you to fly wherever it ta we take. I said. I could hear a lot of laughter in her voice as she said, Can do. And I'm not going to ask why more ponies are coming with you two. But if you expect to have more, you need to make sure you get a bigger transport. Have Ravane get a TX-152 ready if you have one. 
If not, look for a X582. Their models are marked on the front. We'll either need one of those ships to get to the Stratus and carry a few more ponies. I'll let her know. Just be ready to hook up and fly as, you, as soon as you get to the hangar. We're going to want to leave in a hurry. Trust me, I said. Do I want to know why? She asked. Probably not. Let's just say I'm going to give Wolfsbane another reason to hate me, I said. Then cut off the connection before I, she could ask me anything more. Once that was done, I found the communication device and connected to the hangar bay. Scribe Holly or Crimson Lance, are you there? A moment passed, and then I heard Ravane's voice say, Yes, this is Scribe Holly. It's me, Sparkle. Can we fr talk freely? I asked. It's just me and Crimson Lance here. You're good to talk, she replied. Good. I shut down the systems, so you should be safe to open the doors for Solstice and Stardust. Solstice said to look for an X582 or a TX152, since they're going to have a few more ponies than planned. Are either one of those down there? I asked. Yes, there's a X582 here and a TX152, but the TX152 is a hole in the back and more damage to the front, so we'll have to get the former ready. How long till Dahlia and you are down here? She asked. Dahlia's on her way. She's getting a few things and the doctor guy. I'm finishing up stuff on my end, then I'm going to rush down there and we'll plan to leave ASAP. I said. What are you planning? She asked, knowing me too well. I couldn't help but the large smile that came to my face, though Vivane couldn't see it. Something big, but don't worry. I'm not going to get any pretty hurt. I hope. You hope? Young lady... Whatever you're planning, just stop and get down here. You know we're here for the ship, and that's it. If you have some half-baked scheme to take Wolfsbane down, then just forget it. Vervain said angrily. I rolled my eyes. Auntie Vervain, I'm not going to do that. Though if I could kill him, I would. No, I'm just making sure that when we're up in Stratus, New Pegasus will be safe from the Steel Rangers. Just trust me, I'll be down there soon. There was a long pause before Vervane finally said, Fine, I trust you, but please be careful. I'm always careful. I'm just not always lucky. So wish me more luck than normal and everything should be fine. See you soon, I said and cut off the connection. Once I was done with that, I went back to the other systems and started up my plan. It was amazing at what I was seeing on this terminal. Hard to believe that Elder Wolfsbane or his nutcase wife would be so stupid to leave what they did on this thing. And to have to only route through the terminals. Shaking my head, I was just about to finish up when the door to Wolfsbane's room opened. I twisted around and watched a tall, rail-thin unicorn with a gray coat and a short pink mane and bright blue eyes walk in, her gaze falling on me. A frown came to her lips, and she said, What are you doing in my room, scribe? Um, I was told to come up here, and... I started to say, but she cut me off. I never gave any orders for a filly to come up to my room, and my husband's room, and touch our terminal. Who are you, and how did you get into the palisade? She asked demandingly. As she spoke, I remembered her now. The mare who threw us off this very ship when box tape died. This had to be Hacker, Wolfsbane's wife, and had described the lost Alicorn Steel Rangers. I knew our time was up and I was utterly screwed. Or was I? An idea came to me and I smiled, standing as tall as my short stature would allow. Still, my horn didn't even come out to her chin. Guess I look a little different from the last time you saw me. Hacker? Is it? Sorry, when you threw my friends and I off this junky ship, we didn't get a moment to make introductions. So I'll start. Hello, my name's Shadowstar, also known as the Courier. I'd say it's a pleasure to meet you, but I'm afraid that would be too much of a lie, even for me. Her eyes widened a little as she looked over at me. Interesting. I'd love to find out what kind of tech you used to make yourself look so different. I can tell that your coat and mane aren't just dyed, 
and you don't seem to have contacts in your eyes. I've never seen anything like it before. Still, I want to know how you got onto this ship. I'm the courier. I'm good at finding myself in places I shouldn't be. I said. Hmm, indeed, Hacker said, still not moving towards me or sounding any alarms. However, I did see a bit of shadow starting to flow out of her horn. So it was true that she could use magic like my uncle. I see you don't have your Mach 2 on you. Good idea taking it off. It makes it a lot easier to blend in, I take it. Where is it? I grinned. Up a dead mule's ass. Want to go look for it? She rolled her eyes. Children annoy me. You think you know everything, but you're wrong. Shadow. Right. Yes, that's right. Shadow. I'll only give you one chance to tell me where the Mark II is. And I'll even let you sneak out of here alive. If you don't, or if you make another wise crack, I'll slice you into a billion little pieces. I saw the shadows of her horn thicken, and I knew I couldn't piss her off anymore. So I sighed, then reached into my saddlebags and pulled out the silver and red pip buck. It's right here. Good. Now, give it to me, and you can walk away, she said. I thought Wolfsbane wanted me dead, I said. He does, but I'm not my husband. You chose a good time to sneak in, you know. He just left the palisade with most of his steel rangers a few minutes ago. He's going down to plan his attack on New Pegasus in a few days. He'll never knew you were here. As for me, I don't see any reason to bother you. You're not a threat to me or my master. We just want that pit buck. We don't need you, she said. I don't trust you, I said. Too bad, because... You know what? I don't know why I'm bothering. Her horn glowed as more shadows formed around it. I grinned, then threw the pit buck past her and out the door, where it rolled down the hall. You want it? Go fetch. She gave me one last glare, then ran for it. I turned back towards the terminal again and entered the last keystroke I needed to activate my plan. Then I pulled the revolver out of my saddlebags and blasted the terminal. The screen burst right as an alarm started to blare across the entire ship. I saw a hacker run towards me, the pit buck in her magical grip, her eyes narrowing as a robotic voice said over the loudspeaker, Warning, warning, self-destruct sequence has been initiated. All rangers should evacuate immediately. You have ten minutes before self-destruct. You little bitch, hacker said, starting to walk towards me. I pulled on my own magic, letting light shine on my horn. Good note for you, never turn your back on the courier. And fuck you very much. Then I blasted her with my expulsion spell. Her eyes went wide for a moment before the blast slammed into her, throwing her down the hall and into the barracks. She still held on to the pit buck, but I didn't have time to get it. I ran for it, heading down the hall, then back towards the stairs that would lead me down to the hangar. A laugh escaped my lips as I heard the raging scream of Hacker. I'll get you for this courier! Mark my words! I heard her scream. Then I was too far away to hear anything else at all. Laughing more, I kept on running, dodging panicking rangers who were trying to make it to the Vertibux to escape the now doomed airship. The weapon of war that Wolfsbane wanted to use to destroy another one of my homes. When I'd seen the self-destruct option on the terminal, I was shocked they'd leave something like that on an option on this thing. Well, their stupidity is my opportunity. I didn't have any trouble with any of the rangers I ran. I looked like a different mare right now, and I was in a scribe's uniform. It was perfect. It only took me a few minutes to reach the hangar. When I did, I was shocked at the ponies who I found, who were starting to enter the larger enclave transport ship. At least ten others were getting on board, and that wasn't counting my friends. It only took me a moment to see Stardust tucking up to the front of the airship, with Solstice helping him. Vervain was next to them, talking with Crimson Lance and Dahlia, along with a stallion in a white lab coat. Running over to them, I said, Are we ready to go? Vervain's angry face fell on mine. We will be in a minute. 
now tell me, what the hell did you do? I shrugged. Took care of a problem? Don't bother yelling at me now, we only have... I was cut off as a voice came over the intercom again. Three minutes until self-destruct. Good point, Vervain said with a huff. Then she yelled. Every pony into the ship and strap in. We don't have time to dick around. This place is going to blow. Shadow, are you sure this is a good idea? You know Wolfsbane's going to come after you harder than you now that you've broken his favorite toy, Solstice said when she finished helping Stardust. He'll be distracted for a while thanks to the toy I left with his wife, I said with a laugh as Dahlia and Crimson Lance walked past me quickly to get into the airship. Stardust looked over at me as Solstice started to hook herself up to the ship. What did you do? I mean, apart from destroying this thing. Gave Hacker a fake Mark II. She's going to be so pissed when she finds out the one she has is nothing but a stable 828 pip buck with some paint on it. I said with a laugh. Now, let's get out of here. We can talk once we're on the ground. Sounds good, he said, then turned towards the open hangar door. Ready to go, Solstice? Yeah, now Shadow, Vervain, hurry up and get in. Solstice said as we finished clipping herself into the airship. Right, I said as we got into the back and pushed my way past Steel Rangers who were against Wolfsbane. The dude in the lab coat, Crimson Lance, and finally sat next to Dahlia with Ravain following. Once we were in, one of the rangers shut the door and I yelled, Okay, you two, let's get the hell off this thing. Getting blown up isn't on my bucket list. Well, not yet, anyway. With a blast of air, their wings came down and the airship lifted into the air with a slight hum coming from the flight generators on the ship. With another flap, we were heading out of the palisade and into open air. There was a window next to where I sat, and from it I could see the large airship as we pulled away. Vertibucks were flying away from it and the other side of the large compound. Ponies on the ground were screaming and running away from under the hovering ship as the clock slowly ran down. Why did you set off the self-destruct? Mervain asked as we got further and further away. I didn't answer. I was watching, knowing that once again I might have put more innocent ponies in danger, so... Uh, also, I could save the ponies I cared about. I know that not all Steel Rangers were bad, but they worked with that idiot Wolfsbane and his wife. I'd do it all over again, just to slow those two down. Even with that, I wouldn't look away from the thing I've done. It only took another moment, and then the flash of light and a loud boom. The palisade exploded. My eyes widened as I saw how powerful the blast ended up being. The blast took out part of the Applewood sign, three vertibucks and part of the building under the large sign. Then the ship came crashing down, destroying more and more as it exploded again once it hit the ground. Fires spread across the city light compound. Ponies died, others screamed, and with a single keystroke from a terminal. The Los Alicorn Steel Rangers were dealt a critical hit. I looked back, finally, and let my eyes fall in vervain. Then Dahlia, who looked scared as explosions echoed through the windows of our ship, then to Crimson Lance, who looked angry, and I said, I did it to protect my home. If you don't like it, then I don't really care. You can get off my airship when we land, and if you want to deal with me then, feel free. But I'm not going to say sorry for putting a stop to the monsters who wanted to kill my family and friends or home. Then I turned and ignored them all, as we flew on back towards Los Alicorn. I watched the destruction I'd wrought. It was becoming a standard thing for me, as I realized. When something was too big to deal with, destroy it all. Like Appleton, Mill City Tower. This time I didn't feel a shred of guilt in my actions. True, some of the Steel Rangers down there weren't bad. Some of them might have even helped us take down Wolfsbane. But they were few, and honestly, they didn't matter in the grand scheme of things. I'm done letting the ones I care for be put in danger just because I was worried about hurting a few innocents. Nobody said anything as we flew on, heading towards the meeting point where we'd drop off the passengers in Vervain with Dahlia and Crimson Lance. It wasn't far from the place where Mom died, close to a ministry entry point. I could just make out the spot as we flew on. Then I felt Vervain touch my shoulder. I turned to ask her what she wanted, only to find her holding my Mark II. She had a sad smile on her face as she said, 
We are going to need this again. Slowly, I took it in my magic, then slipped it back onto my foreleg. I clicked the latch, closed, and watched as it vanished, melting with my foreleg again. I watched as the activation screen went through its system checks. Thank you, Auntie Vervain. I may not agree with what you did, but I know what you were thinking. I'm not going to judge you for it, but I do want you to at least try to stop yourself from going further into the dark place you're stuck in, she said. I ignored her, watching as the screen came up on the Mark II. Welcome, Shadow Star. Your Pitbuck 3000 Mark II SB is now reactivated to your original settings. Due to removal of your passcode, has been set to Guardian. Please remember this passcode, as it is the only way to remove your Pitbuck 3000 Mark II. If you have any troubles with your Mark II or need help with removal, please speak to a certified stable tech technician. Thank you. I looked over at Vervain, asking, The passcode changed. Why is that? She shrugged. I know a lot about the Mark IIs, but that part not so much. It could be that it's a safety feature, or it's just letting itself up to fit your new personality. My old one was Morningstar, and that's back before I knew my old name, I said. Yes, but the Mark II was around you uh, back when you were still Morningstar. I can't say why it chooses the codes it does. The only pony who can answer that has been dead for a long time, she said, running a hoof over my foreleg. Now... Do you understand what I was saying before? I slowly let my foreleg fall away from her, saying, I understand, and honestly, Auntie Vervain, I don't really care. You don't know what I've been through the past few months. You don't understand what I've had to go through every day just to keep my mind in control. I'm so tired of being the one who has to watch the ponies I care about die. I'm done with being weak done caring about any pony but the ones I can protect. That's what I did back there. And as I said before, I don't care what any of you think. I'd do it again in a heartbeat. I just wish I could have taken Wolfsbane and his cutthroat bitch of a wife down with the ship. She tried to say something to me, but right then the transport landed. I got to my hooves and walked out before she could tell me what I'm sure I needed to hear. I wasn't going to turn back. Right now, I have a mission to do, and that is to save my dad. And then it was off to a new mission, one I haven't yet told my friends about, but I would once we were on our way to Stratus. When I left the transport, I was met by ten coursers and White Oak. She looked behind me and frowned. You took a few ponies with you, I see. I also saw the destruction of the Palisade. You told me you wouldn't go after Wolfsbane. What's going on here, Shadow? Her voice was calm, but I could see the anger in her eyes. I didn't care one bit, I just walked right up to her and said, Don't worry, your son's still alive. They were going to attack New Pegasus soon, so I took out the problem. I don't really have time to deal with you or the rest of this bullshit you want to tell me about how foolish I was, because I don't care. Now, as for the ponies with me, they are still rangers who wanted to get away from Wolfsbane. This one right here... I pointed out to Black Dahlia, who was coming out of the transport with Crimson Lance and Vervain. Is Black Dahlia. Your contact? Oh, and Wolfsbane's daughter. Not sure if you knew that or not. I then turned back towards Black Dahlia and the rest, saying loudly, Hey, everypony. First of all, I'd like to thank you for the help you gave me, and hopefully will still give me in the future. Let me introduce you to my ally. Her name is Director White Oak of the Ministry, and also former senior scribe of the Hidden Sand Steel Rangers and current senior citizen. Believe me, she's a lot older than she looks. She's also Wolfsbane's thought-to-be-dead mother and Dahlia's grandmother. So if y'all want to help fix what's wrong with your mostly destroyed branch of the Steel Rangers, you'll have to deal with her. If not, then go back to Wolfsbane for all I care, and go fuck yourselves. I say this because of two reasons. One. If this gives you a bone to pick with me, I'll destroy you. I promise you that. Two, I just don't have the time to deal with your shit. I got things to do, and ponies to kill. Every pony looked shocked by what I just said. Most of all, White Oak, who 
hissed into my ear. What are you doing? My identity. Yeah, was well, supposed to stay secret. I know. Well, guess what, White Oak? I'm tired of secrets. Every pony knows my secrets. My mom had them. Ravane had them. Your father, my father, you, every pony has them. I'm tired of the lies, of the secrets, and most of all dealing with all of this. So, if you want to get things fixed, and if you want my help in the future, then you'll need to stop hiding and do something. Stop acting like the Steel Rangers and help ponies. Here's your chance. Help them. Get to know your granddaughter who risked her life to save me and help others. Right now, I'm leaving. I have to help my own family. I said. Then I walked over to Dahlia. The anger on my face fading as I came up to her. Is... Is she really... White Oak? She asked. Yep, she is. And even though I'm a little angry with her and a few others, she's not bad. She'll help you. Same for Vervain. Your family. I think it's time that your family starts to heal itself. I want to thank you again for what you risked for me. Also, sorry I destroyed your home, but I hope that you understand why I had to do it. If not, and you want to get revenge on me for it, then at least wait until I help my dad. Then we can deal with what I did. Okay? I said keep my voice low as the rangers around us talk to each other about the fact that Wolfsbane's mother was still alive. I could just make out a small tear in one of her eyes when she nodded, saying, I'm sure a lot of the ponies who live there will be fine. I'm not okay with what you did, but I do understand why you did it. Now go and save your dad. I'll see you when you get back, all right? I shook my head slowly. Unless you go to New Pegasus with Vervain, you won't see me again, at least not for a long time. When I'm up in Stratus, I'll be heading back home. I have things I have been putting off for too long that I need to deal with. She smiled, then said, Then I'll probably head back with my aunt. I'd like to get to know her better, and I want to help you as much as I can. The same goes for me, Crimson Lance said. I know there are still problems with the Steel Rangers and Hidden Sands, too. Maybe we can do something to help you with that. I have a few contacts there. We'll stand with you, Courier. I felt a small smile pull on my lips as I said, I'd be glad to have it. It'd be good to get some intel from inside the Hidden Sands Rangers. Try to get in contact with a scribe called Hazel. She's a friend, and I believe she can be trusted. Also, if you head to the Shadow Talons base in Freedom, you can find former Star Paladin Sandstorm. He's another trusted friend. Let him know that there's something else going on with Sapphire. I believe she might not have been wrong, killing the former elder. I'll make sure your message gets to him, Crimson said with an even bigger smile. Safe travels, Courier. And good luck. Crimson, call me Shadow, I said as he nodded. So I turned away from them and went back to White Oak, who looked livid pissed. Got any more secrets you want to blurt out into the world, Shadow? She asked, her tone angry. Loads of them. But I don't have the time. But I do have the interest. Listen, sorry for saying what I did, but she can't hide anymore. Anyhow, is everything ready? I asked. She took a moment to compose herself, then said, Or oh, left with Wind Thrasher and the Foals a few hours ago. Stormy was able to get a message to Hailstorm about the updates to the plan, and he'll meet Wind Thrasher near Gravel City. Aura's going home and setting up the rest of the plan from her end. Also, Stormy told me right before I left that she's heading to New Pegasus too. Said something about doing her part to help. Didn't give me a moment to argue with her about it. That sounds like Stormy. I don't think any pony can get her to listen. If she has a plan, she'll see it through to the end, if she can, I said. That's not really true. I think Grim and maybe you are the only two she'll listen to. She told me flat out that she only cares about helping you and the Wasteland now. And if she didn't like it, then she'll never come back. White Oak said with a sigh. It's like I've lost control of every pony. But interestingly enough, Wingnut and Bite gave me some very interesting intel before I left. One of my eyebrows went up as I said, What kind of intel? 
Well, apparently your friends have been stooping about the Ministry, collecting data and intel ever since they arrived. I guess I can't blame them. It's hard to trust ponies you don't know. But the fools came across some information that a few ponies under me are planning something. Something that could be bad for me and you, she said. Bad for the both of us? How? I asked. I'm not sure yet. All Wingnut would say is that they didn't have enough time to get everything, although he did leave me with enough information to learn the rest on my own. I'll keep you updated and send you a broadcaster when I get back, so you have my personal ID, the same secure channel your mother used to use. That way, I can get into contact with me at any time you need, she said. I'll just be safe, all right? I know I kind of left you out to drive with the rangers here, but trust me, it'll be a good thing in the end. I said. She rolled her net, eyes. I knew one day I'd have to come back from the dead. I just never thought it would be so sudden. But you're right. It's time the Ministry stepped up and did something for the Wasteland. Now get out of here. We'll be fine. I smiled, then walked away, heading towards Ravain, who was talking with a couple of the ponies who had came with us. I have to leave. She turned towards me with a sad look on her face. I wish I could come with you. I know. Trust me, I'll be fine. When you get back to the Ministry, make sure Uncle Ori gets well and is able to come back home, I asked. A funny look came over her face as she said, Don't worry. I'll keep an eye on him. Two, if I'm able. He'll be fine. He's tough. What he is, is skinny and almost helpless. He'll try to overexert himself and try to help, and I don't want him doing that, I said, then hugged her. I love you, Auntie Vervain. I love you too, sweetie. Now get going. I'll see you in New Pegasus, she said, then let me go, turning towards Dahlia and Crimson Lance. I took a moment to watch as the Steel Rangers who'd escaped with us, Dahlia, Crimson, and Vervain, went towards White Oak, who started giving directions to the group. Then I turned towards Stardust and Solstice, who were standing side by side. I always thought it funny how similarly they looked, and it brought a smile to my face again. Then I walked over, asking, So, are we ready? Stardust hadn't been disguised like Ravane and I were. He was in a set of black, dark power armor, and so was Solstice. Most of his mane was hidden under his helmet. He laughed, saying, just waiting on one thing from the clouds, then we're ready. What are we waiting for? I started to ask. Then out of nowhere, a metal cylinder slammed into the ground a few meters away from us, making me jerk and scream. What the fuck was that? Just what we've been waiting for, Solstice said, unhooking herself from the transport and going over to it. She picked it up, then pushed a hidden button on the side which made a strange thing open. From inside, she pulled out a strange outfit and three small ruby gems. An outfit for you, Shadow. To fit in with the unicorns and Stratus, and the ID tag so we can get around the city, no problems. About time she sent this. I was starting to think she forgot. Your mom did this? I asked. Yep, but now that it's here, we have to move. A capsule like this being sent down to the wasteland may cause some ponies topside to get very nervous, she said, passing me the outfit and the ID. But we're nowhere near Stratus. How'd she get it here? I asked. Solstice eyed me with a funny look. My mom's got her ways. Also, the Enclave might not have a city close to here, but they always have patrols. It's one reason we're going to have the IDs now, and it's a good story when we go up there. What I don't get is how you two are going to get around without being disguised like me, I said. Oh, trust me. We'll just uh, be going after we get going. Stormy gave us something that'll help us keep hidden. But for now, the armor will do. Now, get back in the transport. We have a council pony to save, Solstice said, running back to Stardust. I waited a moment as Solstice talked with him. Then he also unhooked from the transport came over towards me. When he was close, I asked, What's going on? I thought you both were pulling the transport. He laughed, flipping the visor of his power armor so I could see his bright pink eyes. 
With less ponies in the transport, it only takes one Pegasus to pull it. So, I'm gonna ride with you. The story is that you're a researcher for a company called Cloud Rider Industries that was down on the surface collecting data. I'm going to be your guard. Pretty cool, right? I just shrugged, then headed back to the transport. If Solstice says that'll work, then that's fine with me. I climbed into the back, followed by Stardust, who closed the door behind himself. So, once we get above the clouds, am I going to have to remove my Mark II again? He shook his head. No. Stormy didn't have this little trick ready when you left, but now it's good to go. Let me see your foreleg. I held out my foreleg with the Mark II. What are you talking about? He grinned, then stuck a small disc to the underside of the Mark II. It was about the size of a bottle cap, with a speck of green that looked like a small gem in the center. The thing flashed green, then vanished as the color of my Mark II changed. It went from a silvery white with red accents on it to what looked like a worn-out, normal pip buck. Huh. Cool. Stardust said with a laugh. Stormy said that a few unicorns and pegasi up in Stratus have pip bucks, so it's not too uncommon. With this little doohickey, it'll mask the strange look of your Mark II and make it look like a normal old one. I pulled my hoof back and looked at it in amazement. Is there anything Stormy can't invent? We're taking off, so buckle up, Solstice shouted. We both did, and then a moment later, the transport blasted into the sky. Solstice turned us around, and we started heading back east, towards New Pegasus. Only now, we were climbing slowly higher towards the gray cloud cover. Once we were stable in the air, Stardust said, I asked Stormy the same thing, and she told me, the only thing I can't invent is true friendship. Then she walked away. Weird, if you ask me. I felt a stab in my new heart at that, but smiled. Yeah, she is, but at least she's on our side. Yeah, Stardust said, sitting back a little uncomfortable. Damn, I forgot how much I hate power armor. Where did you get it anyway? I asked. Why well, don't had a set lying around in storage. No idea where she got it, but it's a nice fit. It's also an old model but it should still pass for a good set of any in the Enclave. I just hate it because it slows me down and it's like being trapped in a tin can. I'm jealous. I've always kind of wanted to see what it was like to wear a set of power armor. From what I've learned, there isn't power armor for unicorns, I said. You know, I heard something once about the Ministry of Arcane Sciences working on something for unicorns. Not sure if it was ever completed. Something about power armor messes with unicorn spells or something. Why would you need it anyway? You're amazing without being trapped in a suit of metal and computer chips, Stardust said. I've been hurt so many times since I've left Stable 28 that it would be nice to have something more than my normal armor to protect me, I said with a sigh. Well, every pony has to have a dream, I guess. Even if there is a set of armor out there a unicorn can use, I wouldn't even know how to operate it. I sat in silence for a few minutes as the clouds started to surround us with Solstice climbing higher. Then Stardust said, If you ever wanted to learn how to use it, I can teach you. I mean, you won't be able to use the helmet, but it still works well enough without it, especially if you have a pit buck. Wait, really? I asked. Yeah, so if you really want to learn how it works, I'll teach you. Just say the word, he said. I smiled at him. You got yourself a deal. A deal? Wait, you mean I could have asked for something in return? <sighs> Damn it, he said in a joking manner. I laughed, then moved to sit next to him, laying my head on his shoulder as we slowly got even higher and my ears started to pop. Yeah, but it's too late now. The deal's been struck. You'll teach me to use power armor for nothing more than being a nice friend. I felt him pull me closer and gave me a hug. I smiled as I looked out of the windows across from us. Then I said quietly, I love you, Stardust. Hope you know that. You're my best friend and the first one I made when I made my escape from the stable. We've been through a lot together, and I couldn't have made it this far without you. So, thank you for being there no matter what. <laughs> I wasn't always there. I did try to kill you a few times, and almost did kill Aura, he said, sounding sad. 
I forgive you for that. I know it wasn't you, and we got you back. Now, let's watch what happens next, and see if we get to keep this crazy adventure going, I said. I felt his foreleg tighten him around me as he said, I love you too, Shadow. And even with Hailstorm kind of back, you're still my best friend. Through thick and thin, we can do anything we set our minds to. If you two are done being weirdos back there, we should watch the sky. If I'm not mistaken, this will be the first time either of you has truly seen a sunrise, Solstice said. The two of us looked back out the windows right as the transport lifted above the cloud layer. Our eyes were met with one of the most beautiful things I'd ever seen in my life. An orange, brilliant orb was coming over the horizon. It painted the clouds purple and pink with other similar mixed colors in it as it slowly took its place in the heavens. The warmth of it was unlike anything I could remember feeling in my life. As I took a deep breath of wonder and shock, it felt like life itself was being pushed into my body. I felt a tear fall down my face as I witnessed the utter beauty of it. It's breathtaking, I said. Yeah, sure is. Makes me feel like something's been missing from my life, and now I finally see it, Stardust said. I smiled and took in another deep breath of air again. It felt like life itself flowed in my body. I let it out slowly, then said, Let's go save Stratus. And the Wasteland. Sounds good to me, Solstice said. She pumped her wings hard as we shot forward towards what could end up being our deaths. Footnote. Level up. New perk added. Tactician. You're clearly quick on your hooves to come up with a solution when under pressure. With the Tactician perk, you gain plus two to intelligence while wearing faction clothing behind enemy lines and while in caution.